in the history of Russia, the disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant occupies a special place. The accident, which became the largest in the history of nuclear power, attracted the attention of the whole world. Colossal forces of people and equipment were thrown to eliminate the consequences of the Chernobyl disaster. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the Soviet Union became liquidators of the accident. Today, films and books are still being made about the events at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in April 1986. At the same time, the Chernobyl catastrophe has drawn all the attention of people for many years. Although, even in the USSR, there were other tragic accidents and incidents related to human attempts to use the peaceful atom, including for military purposes. For example, a major radiation accident occurred on August 10, 1985, on a Pacific Fleet submarine. A year before the Chernobyl disaster and 40 years after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the nuclear reactor exploded aboard the Soviet submarine K-431 in Chajma Bay. Submarine K-431 The submarine K-431 was a Project 675 submarine and was a nuclear-powered submarine armed with cruise missiles. The submarine belonged to a rather large series of Soviet submarines, which were built from 1960 to 1969. In just nine years, the Soviet industry transferred 29 submarines of this project to the Navy. Specifically, the boat K-31, renamed K-431 in 1978, was laid at the shipyard in Komsomolsk on Amur on January 11, 1964. On September 8 of the same year, the submarine was taken out of the production line and launched. Factory tests of the nuclear submarine lasted from December 1964 till May 1965. The state tests were successfully completed on September 30, 1965, when the submarine joined the Pacific Fleet. Up to the moment of the accident the submarine had been in active service for almost 20 years. During years of active service the submarine performed seven independent voyages for combat duty, including the Indian Ocean. In 1974 to 1975 the submarine underwent the procedure of reactor core reloading without any incidents. During its service in the Talnik concentrator, the submarine also underwent two repairs. By 1985, the submarine K-431 accomplished 181,051 miles with 21,392 hours of cruising. Project 675 submarines were equipped with a power plant producing 35,000 horsepower. This was enough power to provide the ship with a submerged displacement of 5,760 tons a maximum speed of 22 to 23 knots underwater and 14 to 15 knots above water. At the heart of the boat's power plant were two BMA reactors, two X-70MW. BMA reactors belonged to the first generation of reactors developed for installation on Soviet submarines of Project 627, A, 658, 659, 675. BM reactors constructed at Nye 8 in Kerchatov were a series of water-water thermal neutron nuclear reactors. The reactors of this series were fueled by uranium dioxide highly enriched in the 235 isotope. Radioactive accident in Chajma Bay on the day of the accident, August 10, 1985, the submarine was at Pier 2 of the Navy's ship repair plant in Chajma Bay in Strelok Bay in the Sea of Japan. The defense enterprise of the Pacific Fleet was located near the village of Dune, then called Shkotovo 22. Ship Repair Plant No. 30, located in the settlement, was engaged in core reloading of nuclear reactors and repair of ships of the Pacific Fleet. The procedure for replacing the cores of the two VMA reactors installed on the boat was routine. Shipyard specialists were to replace spent nuclear fuel with fresh fuel rods. The starboard reactor was reloaded without incident. After the port side reactor was reloaded, however, it turned out that the reactor lid could not withstand the leak test. On the night of August 10, specialists found a leak here. By that time, all 180 rods had been replaced, but the head of the port side reactor had to be removed and reinstalled correctly to ensure leak tightness. It was found that a welding electrode sheath had accidentally fallen between the reactor lid and the gasket and was blocking the airtight closure of the lid. The submariners and the personnel of the onshore maintenance base did not draw up any act or notify their superiors about the detected abnormal situation and the results of the hydraulic tests, contrary to instructions. Seafarers also did not call upon the help of the fleet technical department, whose representatives could have monitored the situation and controlled compliance with the necessary protocols. Obviously, the seafarers and plant personnel didn't want any unnecessary problems and proceedings, so they decided to handle it on their own. On Saturday, August 10, a floating workshop with a crane began lifting the reactor lid. 
The accident that followed was a series of events, none of them critical, but all of them catastrophic. Had the work been carried out as required, and in compliance with all technology, the explosion could have been avoided. As the commission later found, the work on the boat on August 10 was carried out in violation of nuclear safety requirements and existing technologies. For example, to lift the reactor lid, conventional slings were used instead of rigid shock-absorbing slings. To save time, the seafarers and shore base personnel decided not to use slings to secure the compensating grid. In order to do so, they would have had to additionally cut the interfering book, located in the reactor compartment of the boat, with gas torches. Realizing that lifting the reactor lid would also raise the compensating grid, which could start an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction, the officers in charge calculated the maximum height to which the lid could be lifted without any consequences. The lifting of the reactor lid by the bow crane of the PM133 floating workshop began toward lunch on August 10. At that moment a torpedo boat entered the bay and ignored the warning signs at the entrance that limited the speed. The speedboat passed through the bay at 12 knots, raising a wave. The wave lifted by the torpedo boat reached the shore and the mooring walls, rocking the floating workshop, which was not stabilized in any way. The reactor lid was also not fixed with rigid shock-absorbing stops. As a result of the rocking, the crane lifted the reactor lid above the intended level. At the same time, the lid pulled the compensating grid, from which it was not disconnected, and the absorbers. The reactor went into startup mode, the nuclear reaction began, which led to a powerful thermal explosion. The catastrophe, which took the lives of at least 10 submariners, happened at 12.05 local time. Elimination of the consequences and victims of the accident within seconds, an enormous amount of energy was released. The powerful explosion completely destroyed and burned down the transfer cabin, which was installed on the boat hull above the reactor. In the flash of the explosion, the officers who were reloading the reactor were almost completely burned. The entire shift numbered 10, according to other reports, 11 people. Only insignificant fragments of bodies remained of them, which were later collected in the bay and in the surrounding area. The explosion lifted the multi-ton reactor lit about 1.5 kilometers into the air, after which it fell on the boat again and damaged the ship's hull below the waterline. Water from the bay area began flowing into the reactor compartment. The crane that lifted the reactor lid was torn away from the PM133 floating workshop, lifted into the air, and thrown into the bay area. In a matter of minutes, everything released into the air from the exploded reactor ended up on the K431 boat, the floating workshop, the pier, in the bay, on the local hills and the plant. The neighboring nuclear torpedo submarine K42 of 627A kit project was also exposed to radioactive fallout. The submarine was subsequently decommissioned. A gold wedding ring found on one of the submariners who died in the explosion found that at the epicenter of the explosion, the level of radioactive radiation reached 90,000 X-rays per hour, about three times higher than it will be in Chernobyl in a year. In the rest of the territory the level of gamma radiation was tens or hundreds of times higher than the permissible sanitary norms. Crews of neighboring submarines, as well as employees of the shipyard itself, were involved in extinguishing the fire that started after the explosion. They did not have any special protective clothing or equipment for working in such conditions. Despite the complexity of the situation, the response team was able to cope with the raging fire within 2.5 hours. Almost immediately an information blockade was activated at the accident site. In the nearby village, communication with the outside world was cut off, access to the shipyard was tightened, and the territory of the plant itself was cordoned off. No explanatory work with the population was carried out, which caused many people to receive a serious dose of radiation. It is noteworthy that the explosion of the nuclear reactor on the submarine that took place in the bay was already called a slam dunk in official documents. According to estimates in 1990 as a result of the accident 290 people were recognized as victims, 10 died immediately after the explosion, another 10 people were diagnosed with acute radiation sickness, and 39 people had radiation reactions, reversible changes in the body. As early as the mid-1990s, the number of people officially recognized by the government as having suffered from the Chajma Bay accident had grown to 950. For obvious reasons, this tragedy remained little known for many years, and the disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant overshadowed it many times over. The events on the nuclear submarine, K-431 in Chajma Bay on August 10, 1985 were classified only in the 1990s.
if you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.